Discoveries in technology, medicine and nutrition are emerging with accelerating speed and improving our health and quality of life. Join us in a series of conversations about exploring the new pharma and biotechnology trends. This is a view on microbiome, brought to you by Lonza. Humans are born with a very simple microbiome, which is the sum of all microorganisms living in or on our body. As we grow, the microbiome develops, and as we reach adulthood, it is relatively stable and unique to each individual. Our bodies are a home for a microbiome of roughly 39 trillion microbes, consisting of bacteria, fungi, viruses, and archaea. To learn more about the microbiome and its therapeutic potential, today we are talking with Lukas Schüppbach, the CEO of Bacthera, as well as Gemma Henderson, Head of Projects and Portfolio Management. Bacthera is a 50-50 joint venture between Christian Hansen and Lonza, active in the emerging contract development and manufacturing market for live biotherapeutic products. Hi Lukas, hi Gemma, welcome to our podcast. Hello Martina, thanks for hosting us today. Hi Martina, nice to have you here. Let's start with some background into the microbiome. Gemma, you as a head of projects, perhaps you could give us the big picture. Well, there's a growing body of evidence that the human microbiome, and that's the microbes that live within or um, on the human body, is linked with human health. For example, there are instances where a reduction in microbial diversity or the reduced presence of certain species is correlated and has therefore been postulated to play a role in diseases such as inflammatory bowel disease, cancer, and even potentially central nervous disorders. Microbiome-based live biotherapeutic products, also uh, abbreviated as LBPs, and often called bugs as drugs in a more colloquial sense. They hold a huge promise to treat or prevent diseases, especially where the patients do not respond to existing therapies. And as such, a significant number of companies are developing and investing in the LBP space, and they're targeting diseases such as obesity, cancer, acne, and allergies, all of which, as we know, can have a significant impact on the quality of the lives of those affected. And our mission at Bacfera is to um, enable our customers to bring these life-changing LBP treatments to patients pioneering the live biotherapeutic industry. So these bacteria are taken orally, as I understand. I'm curious as how Bacfera ensures that the bacteria make it intact through the digestive system into the intestine, for example. And this very much depends on the microbe. So bacteria are very, very different. Some are absolutely resistant to acid. They can survive passage through the stomach. A lot of them are also resistant, for example, bile in the intestine. So they can make it through and survive passage through the intestine. Others are very, very sensitive to stomach acids or even um, other microbes that might be present and they might not survive passage through the stomach or into, even into the intestine. And these types of bacteria, to enable them to reach the intestine, you can also encapsulate. And that's where, for example, we offer unique um, encapsulation technologies at Bacfera, the intrinsic drug delivery technology, and they allow microbes such as live biotherapeutics to be formulated for oral delivery um, with full protection so that they can be released, for example, in the gastrointestinal tract where they might have their effect and their mode of action on a disease. And Lucas, could you give us some background into the company history? Um, Bacthera was established in September 2019 and uh, our headquarters are based in Basel, Switzerland, where we are also setting up our drug product facility. Um, we have a second site in Horsholm in Denmark, where our drug substance facility is based. Since the beginning of the year, we have been offering now drug substance and drug product development services and have been successful in winning already um, several projects from customers based in Europe, the US and also Asia. We um, expect to have finalized the setup of our GMP drug substance facility in Horsholm and our GMP drug product facility in Basel by the end of the year. And um, GMP certification will take place beginning of um, Q1 2021. What's interesting is that this new form that drugs can take, this bugs as drugs paradigm, 
is tapping into a whole new ecosystem of therapeutic treatments. Um, the human microbiome, as I uh, explained earlier, it's a very, very diverse ecosystem. So it contains hundreds, sometimes thousands of different species, and it's very unique to an individual typically. And as such, we from our customers receive quite a wide variety of different types of bacteria, and we're able to work and produce these different bacteria. And they can include the more traditional species that you might also see in yogurt, such as lactobacilli, or as no more normal probiotics, such as bifidobacteria. But we can also work with strict anaerobes, which are playing a key role in the live biotherapeutic industry. And these can include strains such as Fecalibacterium prasnitsi or eubacterium that might have metabolic effects or also can have anti-inflammatory effects. And we're also able to handle bacteria from the uh, risk group two and risk group one um, in terms of biosafety levels at Bacfera. One of the big challenges must be to ensure that these bacteria stay alive during the entire production process. So what we do at Bacfera is our entire production setup and also process and analytical development setup is enclosed. So we have an enclosed process, enclosed analytics, whereby the strains are not exposed to oxygen. And um, also when we um, formulate them as drug substance and drug product, the strains are not exposed during this stage of production. So we minimize the exposure. At the same time, we also have very robust processes and high yields. So we try and make sure that the strains have the maximum ability to survive and stay stable over time and viable over time. So not only do they need to stay alive, you need to make sure that they're stable and their effects are quantifiable, right? So one very important potency measure is counting the number of viable cells and also ensuring that that stays stable over time. Now, as mentioned, um, bacteria life biotherapeutic products might have other modes of action, like they might produce a metabolite or they may um, have an anti-inflammatory trait and that might be very relevant to your clinical trial outcome and would also be something that you would want to measure as a mechanism of action to make sure that your life biotherapeutic drug is active in that sense. Applications of live biotherapeutic products have created many opportunities in both research and development and manufacturing. We are also witnessing an increased prevalence of diseases such as obesity, cancer and diabetes, many of which can be targeted by live biotherapeutic-based therapies. So Lucas, how is the market developing? As of today, there are no commercially available live biotherapeutic product, products. Um, there has been, however, quite a lot of progress in the industry in the last months. Two companies in phase three have announced very positive clinical results, as well as one in phase two. Um, we therefore clearly are confident that first life biotherapeutic products will be commercially available in the near future. Brilliant. Thank you both for joining us today, Lucas and Gemma. Join us next time as we explore the wonders and applications of exosomes, the exciting cellular delivery vehicles.